Hello everyone, I hope you all can see my screen. Um, I'm Lukas Wozniki uh, and I'm a software engineer working uh, on Finish.io. Uh, I have uh, worked with embedded devices for over a decade now and I'm sure many of you have faced uh, the same issues as I did. Uh, when managing software over the year uh, on an embedded device, we often see the cumbersome process of, of uh, developing extremely specific scripts which will perform the upgrades uh, by creating a tunnel to the device or, or actually a very specific set of commands. Uh, even if I just simply want to uh, push a security update for, for one of the applications running on my device uh, or for the fact for a fleet of devices, uh, I just need to remove one of the applications which, which I don't need to be running anymore uh, on my uh, device. It's something which, which always uh, gives us a lot of pain. Uh, in this presentation, I'll show you how Finish.io makes software management easy uh, and how this can be extended for diverse ecosystem of, of different software applications, like for example, Docker, as you already mentioned. Okay. So uh, I'll jump straight into my first demo. Uh, and now, hopefully, you can see my screen. Uh, I'm currently logged onto my device, uh, on the Finish IO device. On the left hand side, uh, I have got uh, a uh, listener on my MQT bus, so this will show what's going on uh, on uh, the device in, in, inside basically the finish, what exchanges are, are going around, and on the right-hand side I'll execute a couple of commands. So uh, the first thing uh, I would like to do is to basically connect and then start the, the finish. So just to install the finish is a simple command from uh, the web already pre-installed on, on my machine. So uh, what I'll do here, I'll, ju I'll just start uh, that bridge, uh, similar to what uh, previously uh, some others may have done. So this now has, has happened. And as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, a lot of message exchanges has happened in the background. So um, there are uh, exchanges between uh, the cloud, which I'm connecting to, as well as uh, Finnish uh, components. Um, so in uh, software management, uh, there's a list of software. So, uh, sorry, I'm using uh, Cumulus IoT uh, as, as the example cloud currently. So uh, as you can see here, I have a list of software installed currently on my device. But how about if I, I, I just need one additional uh, application here? So I know that for device monitoring, uh, I will need uh, an application called Collect the End. Uh, currently, it's unfortunately it's not installed on my device. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, command not found. Oops, certainly not found, as I can't spell. Uh, there it goes. It's, it's, it's not there. But uh, with Finish, uh, as well as the Cumulosity, I can very easily install that on my device. So just through a few of clicks, I'll go over here and I select my colleague decor as, as this will be something which will be required there. And now apply changes. If we go back to my device. Uh, oh, that's already happened. That was actually much faster than I expected. So uh, here on the left hand side, you can see there are uh, some exchanges happening between uh, FinEdge as well as uh, the, the Cumulus ID. Uh, but later on, uh, you can see that Collect D uh, just, just just been installed, uh, and all of that has been uh, actually set up on the cloud. Uh, and just to prove that, now we have our Collect D installed. Okay. Uh, as well, now if I refresh my software list here, that's been updated. Oops. My apologies. And Collect D is now installed with this specific version, as I asked it to install the latest. Uh, okay, yeah, so with a few few clicks as you have you have seen uh, with, with, within the IoT, I was able to uh, install an application and this can be extended to pretty much uh, any software uh, you want you, you may want to do on your device. Okay. So um, with IoT device software sophistication with, with analytics with, with new features added on the fly, uh, all with cyber threats, uh, which is ever increasing. The security and reliability of edge devices are among the most important aspects of software development process. We spend hours perfecting our code, uh, but we all know that sooner or later, 
we have to update our devices uh, or add a new feature. Uh, as enterprises still demand their product to run at the same elevated level of uh, resilience and need even less uh, field service engineers visit, we all meet with, with some of the following challenges or even sometimes all of those challenges. So uh, maintenance of the set of scripts for updating your device. Do you have to open an SSH tunnel for every single device or do you have to have a specific version of the script for uh, your device type? I sometimes have to do. Also managing a fleet of devices, uh, which very often will run inconsistent software versions. That's also uh, can be uh, done much easier with Finish IO. Uh, you have various device types and making sure that all of them uh, run consistent backend. That's what Finish IO uh, provides you. Um, so one of the main pains of, of IoT is maintenance. So uh, with Finish IO, all your devices run this consistent backend which can be easily updated and you don't have to worry about it. Um, how about your device security? So as I just shown you, there is a uh, fairly easy, if, if you're in your cloud UI, uh, way to see what current version of the software you uh, run. And then therefore, if there are some security patches, you can easily apply them uh, via Finish.io. Um, so let's briefly talk, talk about uh, how Finish.io works was already uh, being introduced to that, but particularly uh, Finish IO software management over the year uh, has uh, two very important components. Uh, so as I already shown you, there is the bus uh, where all the messages are exchanged between the components. Uh, and also we have the data mapper, uh, which helps to translate or agnostic messages uh, happening on the bus to your cloud specific uh, message tag. So in our case, it was Velocity IoT. Uh, the second very important co component is uh, device monitoring, uh, device management and monitoring agent, uh, which helps to execute all of that uh, command sent via the cloud environment. Uh, agents may role to be an independent actor which can execute operations from any cloud uh, that a mapper supports. Therefore, it makes the whole Finish Cloud, uh, sorry, Finish IO uh, cloud agnostic. Um, there is another very notable feature uh, of Finnish IO software management. Uh, it is actually extensible. Uh, we should ask who, how and why. Uh, so we have introduced uh, the plugin API. With the API, we made it easy to add support for whatever type of software packages you need. As I already mentioned, currently I'm running a, a something with, with APT, but uh, it also allows you to, to manage uh, some Docker components or anything else which you could extend for. So even though uh, Finnish IO components are written in Rust programming language, where we all uh, know how sounds, how terrifying it may sound, don't, 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 you don't have to worry about that. We we follow about all those folks who prefer other programming languages. Uh, therefore, the plugins for software management can be written uh, with uh, your preferred framework. Uh, just need to adhere to the plugin API there. That's why it's this, uh, the kind of a little bit like a additional components to uh, finish IO. Uh, yes, so I'll jump now to another demo that I'll show you here uh, how we can fairly easily add uh, new plugins and add support for new type of, of software uh, with a very simple reference plugin, uh, which we, we should prepare for, for Docker. Okay, um, so my setup for that, as for the previous demo as well, uh, is, is rather simple. So already, as you have noticed, I'm using Cumulosity IoT, uh, and my device uh, is connected to Cumulosity IoT. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi. I, on that Raspberry Pi, I have Finish IO, on which I have the uh, official, officially supported Touch Up APT plugin. And now I'll go over uh, a little bit of code how the Tetch Docker plugin, a reference plugin, uh, which which may help you either write or extend uh, new plugins. So, okay, go to the demo, and let's now jump to the code. Um, so, as you can probably see straight away, uh, we have uh, introduced the reference plugin in a as a shell script, 
Uh, so I'll skip over the first little bit boring part. Uh, that is pretty much just just passing of some arguments plus a nice help message, so so you know what to uh, what and how to 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 use the plugin. Uh, I'll jump to the more more interesting bits. So. Um, The plugin itself, uh, as I already mentioned, has it has to adhere to uh, the plugin API. And so the plugin API asks uh, the plugin implementer to, to provide a couple of, uh, a few of uh, specific functions or, or subcommands handled by that plugin. Either it's going to be a shell script or it's going to be a Python script or as similar to our attach APT plugin written in Rust. Uh, so it always has to do to pass this, this uh, subcommands. So, so uh, just to list them will be uh, plugin prepare, list, install, remove, as well as finalize. So uh, all of those subcommands have to be handled somehow, uh, but not all of them have to, sorry, uh, not all of them have to execute uh, very specific code. So for example, in our uh, reference plugin, uh, the uh, prepare command does not, nothing. Um, one mandatory command for the agent to detect it is the list command. So this list command uh, should return a list of software. So as you've seen before in the API, uh, sorry, in the UI, uh, the list of software uh, is always taken from uh, from, from, from the device, it's, it's whatever has been uh, there after installation of the plugin. Uh, and the two major features, which you, which is obviously the install and remove, so they allow you to add or remove software from your uh, from your device. Okay, so I'll just now quickly go over how to add the new plugin, and hopefully we'll have enough time so I can uh, install some something with via our newly added Docker plugin. Um, Okay, so uh, theoretically, Docker plugin, as it's a, a shell script, uh, it already uh, has a shell line. It should be executed uh, by uh, my environment fairly easy. So the only thing actually I have to do uh, is to copy uh, that plugin into the one specific directory. Uh, so in, in case of uh, Tetch currencies, the etc Tetch SM plugins. Uh, and the name is actually quite important because uh, it will show you uh, kind of like the plugin uh, name later in the cloud. So I'll just copy that file now. And uh, this plugin uh, has been now added uh, to, to my device. And now we should see that all of those new, newly added Docker components let me just reload that. I'm not sure if it's going to be at the top or at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom in this case. But anyway, uh, so the plugin currently has been picked up by uh, the engine and should uh, update the list. Uh, okay, uh, hope that was very useful, guys, for you. And thank you for thank you so much for the attention. And feel back to you.